Greetings, I'm Ken Herbert and I'm your child's maths teacher. Uh, I want to go through some of my expectations and processes with you. I'm coming from the perspective of quality learning and enough time for quality learning. And as a teacher um, who's been teaching maths for a long time in all different contexts at different levels, uh, and as a father of two school-aged ch uh, children, um, this is something I believe in very strongly and am dedicated to. What I do to, uh, to get the time and the quality of learning is flip the uh, direction of the lecture part. While a lecture is important, of course a lecture does not equal learning. We need more than the lecture alone in order for learning to happen. So you might have heard about levels of understanding and you, know, you might have seen something triangular like Bloom's Taxonomy. So Bloom's Taxonomy we might have knowledge and retrieval towards the bottom. We might have understanding here. But of course there's a lot more and there was a big research uh, project that was based in the United States but of course it has ramifications for Australia as well that out of 20 million students involved in the survey classrooms that these students learned in spend enormous amount of time more than 80 percent in these areas here so learning is more than just knowledge and retrieval and it's more than just basic understanding especially in the 21st century when we will see things that haven't even begun yet or only in their early stages like artificial intelligence and so on and we need these other orders so flipping the learning gives us more time to go up we spend uh, a lot more time in fact around here sometimes we go even further into the more creative and critical thinking areas By doing this in the maths class, it means that I'm free to assist students. And I like to, I like to reach every student, every lesson, and I manage to do that. So basically when students come into class, they watch the video. And the video, I don't want to talk too much about that because it's not about the video. It's about what we do in the classroom. But the video creates a, a space where that would normally traditionally be filled by a teacher-centered activity, a teacher at a whiteboard and the students are passively copying notes and listening and watching on a good day. And um, that takes up maybe 30, 40% in, um, in a mass subject, especially if it's a higher end one. But by putting stuff into an effective and focused video or two, we basically get that out of the room. And basically when students come in, I always check everybody's notes, a special note taking system called Cornell Notes basically is uh, something I train students in and I train them in how to watch the video. This has already happened this year um, before this particular video was created and I check that and I also touch base with every student. Again, with every student I'm reaching every student every lesson. After that's all checked, I have a good conversation with every student and I look at their notes and see how they've constructed them in an active way and see what their summary says. And I can get an idea of what they've learned. And they, can, they have an opportunity then to ask me questions. Beyond that, students usually get in and start automatically. And there are many other things on there. There are some of the things, so with some classes, where there's a lot of students that have started the year already struggling, perhaps there's gaps in their previous knowledge, it might be very heavily like this. But I can differentiate the learning and I use mastery learning a lot. That means students don't move on unless they've mastered the skill at least at a basic level, hopefully at a C level. Uh, it's not one of those cases where I teach on regardless. So it's very important that a student demonstrates mastery to me and with a flipped classroom I have a lot more time. And the most important thing I guess, more time means more conversations and better relationships and um, certainly have started the year this year with some excellent uh, signs of great working relationships with students 
and that equals good learning most of the time. But all these other things too, very important in the 21st century. What you can do as a parent is please understand that I don't set homework in the traditional sense. Uh, unless it's study for an exam or students have an assignment out where they might have to do some extra stuff. Instead of the homework, if you want to know what the students should be doing, they should be watching the video. After um, each lesson, there'll be another video loaded up on OneNote and then or YouTube. Uh, better, best to go to OneNote. And basically, you can get a sense from looking at your child's OneNote uh, or, or possibly YouTube to see what students should be watching. There's minimum of, very rarely is there less than one video per lesson. So if the students have three lessons a week, there'll be a minimum of three videos set for homework. The videos, as I said, are not that long and they're focused and you look in between five and 12 minutes depending on the level of the subject and depending on if I need to put up extra videos for um, prerequisite knowledge that some students might not have gotten in the pre previous years. So all this boils down to good relationships, better quality of learning, and active learning. And just uh, please bear in mind, it's not about the videos, even though the videos need to be watched, it's about what goes on in the classroom as a group together. Thank you very much.